morning, everyone. Almost. I switched on, there we are. <laughs> well, good morning. It's a, a cool morning, a happy Thanksgiving to you all. It's a different, <clears throat> a different kind of Thanksgiving this year. And uh, <clears throat> it's good to see you, and it's good to see those who will be joining us by uh, the internet. Um, we're thankful that we have that way of uh, communicating, and uh, it's good to, to be able to share together. We're going to sing together the first hymn, Now Thank We All Our God.
We are privileged that we have access into the most holy through the new way that was opened up for us by Jesus. And so we can come to God and call him our Father. We can bring our prayers and our petitions to him always with thanksgiving. There's always something that we can be thankful for. Today is Thanksgiving Day and uh, I'm sure there, there is much that we really can be thankful for. One of the things that we can be thankful for is that we are part of the Canadian Baptists of Ontario in Quebec. And uh, I had a, an email this week uh, to say that uh, they will be praying for this church on Wednesday. Uh, they asked for any special prayer requests. I have not replied yet, but I will be sending prayer requests if anybody uh, thinks of something that I need to share, please uh, mention to me afterwards. Uh, it's good to be able to share together. And in these days, it has also been good that we have been, I have been able to commit to connect with other pastors in CBOQ. They meet for prayer every Tuesday online, and uh, it's, it's been a blessing when I've been able to connect with them. Many are facing real difficulties during this time, especially in the Toronto area and uh, in that particular place. Uh, many churches have not yet opened, and we are blessed that we are open and we're able to meet for worship. Of course, we remember those who are unable to join us, those who would love to be here, and those who are because they may be vulnerable, uh, and because of the health condition that are not joining us. But I pray that they will be able to join us <clears throat> online or in some way we can let them know that we are thinking of them. And I want to thank uh, Helen for this display. We <laughs> it was a real blessing to come here and see that you had taken the time to do that. Uh, I thought this year maybe there won't be any because we are so few because we are, we are going through that time. But thank you so much. It is really very much appreciated. So let's, where you are, bring your own prayers and then I will lead in a prayer. Let's pray. God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come to you this morning and bring our prayers to you with thanksgiving. We thank you for the many wonderful answers to our prayers that we have seen and sometimes we haven't seen. We thank you for the privilege of being able to meet together. And we pray for those who are unable to join us and we ask especially that you will make your presence known to them. with us. Lord, we pray that we might see an end to this pandemic, that uh, we will be able to move on and to be connected again in the way in which we were before. We recognize this year has been a very difficult year, but we, we know that you are still in control of all things and we look to you to help us through. 
for the many people that are suffering because of the uh, closures, because of the lockdowns and the shutdowns and the government uh, instructions, Lord, I pray that you'll help. In these days when there's so much, Lord, help us to turn to you. Help us as your people to encourage others to turn to you in these days. To recognize that you are the one who is in control. And so we thank you for your great love for us. We thank you for every provision that we have. So much that we take for granted. Forgive us for the way in which we just accept things that we have that are real blessings to us. Simple things. But on this Thanksgiving day, on this Thanksgiving weekend, we want to especially thank you. Recognize all the blessings, the freedoms that we enjoy here in, in this country of Canada. And Lord, we think of those who do not have the freedoms that we have. We pray especially for those who are being persecuted because of their faith. We ask, Lord, that you will present yourself with them and help us to appreciate the freedoms that we have. Help us to recognize your word as truth. And in these days, help us to hear from you, not just from the media and the way in which we are being uh, instructed. Lord, we pray that you will help us to hear from you. So again, we, we just bring ourselves to you today. Every member of this church, we pray that we as a church might be a light. A light that shines bright in the darkness of these days. That we might be a beacon of hope. That people will come into a relationship with you and recognize the blessings that we store for us when we come to be with you. Until that time, we know that you help us through it. You promise to be with us always. And so we want to give you thanks. And bring these prayers and bring our praise in the name of your Son, who taught us when to pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I chose a reading which may seem strange for Thanksgiving, but um, Psalm 42 is where I was directed. And... Uh, I will read to you from the New International Version. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God, under the protection of the mighty one, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour, and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you. From the land of Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mysa, deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taught me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? 
Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Saviour and my God. God will bless that reading of His Word to us. Now we sing, in thanksgiving, let us praise Him. And many schools, 
uh, in the UK still have Christian worship as part of their uh, day and uh, at harvest time they did used to consider helping people who are less fortunate and helping especially the seniors in the area and so children were really invited to bring uh, foods, canned foods or various foods that they can pass on uh, to people. But they would always have a display and I remember the church that I pastored in Wales, uh, they had a picture of harvest going back to the beginning of the 20th century. And uh, the church had a balcony all the way around and everything was covered with with uh, harvest, with fruit, and with the kind of things that we have here. And uh, there were always two other things that were, <clears throat> they would have a harvest loaf, uh, which would be a kind of a, uh, how can I say, a sheaf of corn, and uh, it would be displayed. But they would also have because it was a mining area, they would always have a lump of coal and salt. And it was thankful for work, thankful for the, the, the coal that was in the ground and the, the people were able to, to be employed that way and it was a blessing because coal was the means of uh, firing up the uh, trains and so much else and keeping us warm. <clears throat> And salt, a reminder uh, of the scripture that we are the salt of the earth. But this year is a very different year, and I, I, I felt a little bit that I've been reflecting a lot. And Sammy said to me, "Are you depressed?" And I, I said, "I don't know. It's it's a strange kind of feeling because we are being <coughs> bombarded with information of of how many people are sick, how many." Well, not sick, but how many people have the virus and, and uh, the number of people that uh, died and, uh, and, and they, they seem to want to keep pushing and pushing on the media, on the TV, on the news on, and it gets to you. And I guess I identify a little bit with the psalmist in Psalm 42. As he, he describes in verse 5, why my soul are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? He's reflecting. He is expressing his feelings. You know, we need to be able to express our feelings. We need not to hold things in. We suffer when we do that. And the psalmist David, as he's penning these words, he is talking to himself. He is challenging himself with the way that he's feeling. He is describing the situation and the experience that many feel at this time. That it is weighs heavy upon us. And, and it is a struggle sometimes because things sometimes can get overpowering and especially this time of year when families get together and families are so frightened to keep to themselves in lots of ways because of what they've been told and what we are being told. But in, in that situation, in the situation that we are, we need to come as David as he says, why am I so near to cast? Why are you so disturbed within me? And he says, put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. So he is telling himself, look, those are the circumstances. That is a situation that you're going through. Get from that situation, put your hope in God, look to God. He is still in control of all things. As he's 
talking with himself. He says, these things I remember as I pour out my soul. How he used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. He thinks of those days gone by when there was so much rejoicing, there was so much festivity, and so many people were praising God. Things have changed. Maybe we feel that things have changed over the years. I remember days when most children attended a church of some kind. How different it is today. How most children had some knowledge of scripture. How different it is today. We are living in different days. We can think back to those days and there were times of joy and I found that many people, when I was a, a chaplain in Barrie and I talked with some of the seniors, they remembered with fondness those days when they went to Sunday school. Those days when they were younger, when they went to church and they remembered certain things about those days. And they would it would often, when I would pl play my accordion and, and start playing some of the old songs, you'd see smiles come on their faces as they remembered. There was hope. There was a joy. There was an experience that they had that stayed with them right up to that moment in time. And there at that time, they also start to think again, begin to put their hope in God, to put their trust in God. We do face difficult days. We do experience problems and difficulties. But if we look through the scriptures, we find there were moments of real praise and thanksgiving as people worshipped God. For instance, in the book of Ezra, we have the, is the rebuilding of the temple. And the foundation of the temple had been completed. And this is what... Ezra says, when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments and with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals, took their place to praise the Lord as prescribed by David, king of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord. I can just picture, just picture that scene as they come with their vestments, with trumpets, with symbols, what a noise, the some trumpet sound. I remember the trumpet that was played here for so many years. And give thanks for that. But we, here, they came together. They took their places to praise the Lord as prescribed by the David King of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord, He is good. His love toward Israel endures forever. You see, as they came to this place, the temple was being rebuilt. The foundation had been laid. The work was progressing. And they recognized that God was with them. Their focus had again come back to God. They had left him, but they came back. And they came back with thanksgiving as they recognized that God was with them in this work. And they said, he is good. God is good all the time. His love to what is what endures forever. And they said, all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. There was rejoicing. There was such joy and thanksgiving for what had been accomplished. But it says many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who'd seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid. 
while many others shouted for joy. No one could distinguish the sound of the shouts of joy from the sound of weeping because the people made so much noise and the sound was heard far away. Sounds of praise, sounds of mourning. They were sad because they recognized the way they had turned away from God. And the reason this was being built was because of their failure, because of the way that they rejected God's ways. I believe there's a challenge for us today. The foundation is being laid again. We can bring shouts of joy and praise for God is with us and He's helping us through these days. He has not left us. Many people have left God. And I believe what we are seeing today is a result of that. And so there can be mourning, there can be sadness, we can feel sad, we can feel downcast. Because it seems that people have forgotten God. But on this Thanksgiving Day, I want us to, to really think about how God is so good to us. That we have so much to be thankful for. As they continued, they praised God for the foundation being laid as the temple continued to be made. But there was opposition. Go on, reading in Ezra where you find there was opposition to the building. Let's face it, there's opposition to the church today. There's opposition to firmly held beliefs that this word, this book gives us guidelines for life. This book is God's love letter to us. And we have things to be thankful for. We have much to be thankful for. You know, again, there was Nehemiah who was involved with the building of the walls of Jerusalem. Jerusalem had, had become, a, well, deserted. The wall of Jerusalem had broken down. And its gates had been burned with fire. And Nehemiah saw that. And he sat down and he wept. Then he said, he says, I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you. Day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and and my father's family have committed against you. We've acted very wickedly towards you. We've not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I scatter you among nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling. They are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favour in the presence of this man. Description of the way in which things were a way in which a man of God came and recognized the way in which things were and realized that it needed God to change things. They needed to act, but they needed God's help to do it. Today, many people, you know, there would have been a day when a nation would be called to prayer because of a pandemic. Not so today. We will provide the vaccine. We will do this. We will do that. You see, 
we have become sufficient without God. And we are suffering the consequences of that, I believe. We need to be praying on behalf of the people. Nehemiah recognized that the people had turned away and he was praying on behalf of the people and asking God to forgive them, remembering that he had made a promise and he said that he would cause them to be scattered if they turned away from him, but then that he would forgive them if they turned back to him. And so you look through the book of Nehemiah and you recognize the work that went on. And eventually the war was completed. It wasn't an easy task, but God was with them and helped them through the opposition, through the difficulties, through the hardships. And at the end, when it was complete, they came together. All the families came together, the family heads of the Levites. It says, the family heads among the descendants of Levi up to the time of Johanan, son of Elisha, were recorded in the book of Annals, and the leaders of the Levites, who stood opposite them to give praise and thanksgiving, one section responding to the other, as prescribed by David, the man of God. They brought thanksgiving at the completion of the work that God had been with them through it all that God had seen this work completed. And so that's the Old Testament. But we need to come and recognize that God, His love endures forever. That God sent His Son into the world for us. That Jesus died on that cross for us that we can receive forgiveness. We have much to be thankful for, that we can have a relationship with Almighty God. We can have His presence with us by His Holy Spirit. We can be born again of His Spirit and we can live knowing that He is with us. We can change. We need to come to that place that the nation needed to come to, a place of repentance. A place of recognizing that the suffering that is going on around us is, is probably because of a failure to recognize God. And so we, as the people of God, need to hear the words of the psalmist again. Why are you downcast? Why is so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will praise him, my Savior and my God. He remembers the past of the praise and the festive procession. Yet he knows that the people are coming against him. There were so many who were opposing him. And I want to suggest that the church is going to go through a time of, of people coming against us because they don't like what we stand for. We stand for love. There's no room for hate. God so loved. God so loves. And as David contemplates and thinks about it, he says, By day the Lord directs his love. We can know that God directs his love toward us. He loves us. God so loved the world. There's nobody in this world that God does not love. And the opportunity is open for people to respond and receive that love. Receive the new life that he wants to give us. And he says, by day the Lord directs his love, and night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. There's a song in his heart. You know, the 40th Psalm says, He put a new song in my mouth for him and praise to God. Many will see him fear and put their trust in the Lord. I wonder, as we look back over each day, how do we see things? 
Do we allow ourselves to be depressed or do we see God's love? You know, we see evidence of the beauty of His creation at this time of year. It's such a special time. A time when, when we can see the bounty that we experience here in Canada. We are so blessed to live in Ontario with so much that is harvested, that is good food, that is available to us, that is fresh. So much to be thankful for. Go back to my time in Wales and being thankful for the food that was laid out on our tables. Some fruit and vegetables. Children, when they would ask, where did this come from? They would say, I guess if it was here, they'd say, I got it from Mumbles. <laughs> you see, they were remote from the actual harvesting. They did not fully understand because it was remote. They not part of their experience to see food growing. We have so much abundance that God has for us. But we can allow things to pull us down, and we can allow things to drag us down. And we need to come and recognize God's love. Recognize that He is the one that we need to help us through. Sometimes we may feel as David, I said, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must they go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? Is that what people are saying today? Where is your God in this pandemic? Where is your God? God is there. Where are you? Are you ready to receive from God his love or are you going to reject it? Say no thanks. I don't want that. I'm content as I have. I will get through this because they will discover a vaccine and they'll find better ways of dealing with this virus. I don't need God. One of the Psalms the psalmist says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. At Thanksgiving, we really need to be thankful. He says to himself, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. There's so much to be thankful for. I skip the first part of the psalm. Because as we come at Thanksgiving, we really need to be thankful and we need to answer this despair that sometimes we may feel because of what we are being fed. Because it seems that people want to control us, but we need to recognize that God is the one that needs to control us. We need to be filled by His Spirit. We need to be moved by His Spirit. We need to be open to where He is leading us. We are not led by politicians. We are led by God, who sent His Son Jesus into the world to be our Savior, to be our Shepherd. He gave us the Holy Spirit within us to assure us of that hope that we have, to enable us to know that we are a child of God, that this world is not our home, we're just a passing through. We have a home promised in heaven that we will enter if we come to that place of repentance, if we come to that place of recognizing what's going on today is part of this Rejection of God. Calling what is good evil and what is evil good. The psalmist describes his own feeling. Through it 
all through this, this downcast situation. He says this, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. There's a longing for God, that experience of God that we can have. He says, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? We don't need to go anywhere to meet with God. We can meet with Him wherever we are. We can meet with Him where we are now and we can experience His touch of healing. The touch of God. He was longing for God. In these days I long to see people come into a relationship with God. I long to find ways in which we can bring hope to the people around us. Where we can share with them that God's love endures forever. And He is reaching out, inviting us to come to Him. And when we receive from Him, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We are so thankful for all that He has done for us. We are so blessed to receive from Him all that He has. The Apostle Paul always is thankful. Most of his letters begin, I thank God for you. We always thank God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you because of your faith. and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven, about which you've already heard in the true message of the gospel. And then he, in one of his letters in the letter to the Colossians, he says this, he says that we need to be thankful. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful, and thankful and pray for us too that God may open the door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I'm in chains pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should be wise in the way that you act towards out outsiders make the most of every opportunity let your conversation always be full of grace seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone. And I think that's what we need to be praying for. Pray that we might proclaim the message clearly. That we might be wise in the way that we act toward outsiders. It's so easy to find that people who have different views, to have hatred towards them. We need to be more like Jesus and demonstrate love. And show that. Let our conversation be seasoned with salt. Full of grace, seasoned with salt. So they may know how to answer everyone. This Thanksgiving, let's be thankful. That God is still in control. We can come to Him. We can know His presence with us through these days. And maybe we will be the light that shines, that will bring hope to many people who are feeling hopeless at this time. I say to myself, why uh, is your soul downcast? Why am I so laid down cast? Why so disturbed within me? But you hope in God. For I will praise Him, my Saviour, 
and my God. Put your hope in God, for I will praise him, my Saviour and my God. God will help us through when we look to him and we turn to him. He will give us what we need. And I believe we need to be praying on behalf of so many who are going through darkness that they might see light. We're going to sing a hymn that was a favourite of many in the retirement home and nursing homes because I always said we have to count our blessings. And uh, you know, stop and think about some simple things we take for granted. We can turn on a tap when we have water, clean water. Many people, even within Canada, don't have that. We surely need to count our blessings. But most of all, we count our blessings because God loves us and sent his son to die for us. Let's sing, count your blessings.
We give you thanks for your Son, who is our Saviour. We thank you for his love for us. We thank you for your presence with us by your Holy Spirit. And we can know that you are our Heavenly Father. We ask that we might know and experience your blessing as we leave this place, as we celebrate Thanksgiving today. We ask that we might know and experience the presence of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always.